past, it's uh, probably reasonably common for you to have been evaluated based on something that you turn in on paper. So what that means is, if you have the right answers, that's what matters. And, um, and in general, in, in this class, what you're going to find is that having the right answers doesn't matter to me as much as the thinking that you do as you're, as you're like doing the activities and the work that we do in this class. And that seems weird, because it seems like, well, what's the point? Like, what's the point of, of having the right answer? So let me give you, um, let me give you an example, because what I'd like for you to, uh, to be able to understand is um, how it is that I plan to evaluate your work um, in general and specifically uh, the work that we're going to be doing today. So I'm going I'm to give you a couple of examples. The first has to do with, um, with something that you know I know a reasonable bit about. I'm going to have you guys just, in your notes, just jot, jot down something. This is not stuff that I'm going to be testing you on. This is not stuff that I'm going to be um, that I'm going to be like specifically looking to evaluate on you on. But I want you to kind of have an idea of how this works. Okay, so um, so let's um, let's start with um, with what. So we're gonna. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about something that has to do with biology called water quality. So water quality. One of the things that we looked at look at is. DO, okay, and the DO in general, what we're looking for is somewhere around 10 plus milligrams per liter in order to support like trout or salmon populations in streams or creeks, okay? So this is good for trout or salmon in like a creek. All right, now. I'm going to leave this up here for just a second, but I'm going to tell you right now that I'm going to quiz you over this, and this isn't real, okay? it's not real, but I just want you to experience this because there is, there is something about what's going on here that um, translates to the work that I'm going to have you do in class today. Okay, so everybody look at this, I'm going to give you a quiz in just a second, not a real quiz, but a fake quiz. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So the quiz is this. It's two parts, okay? And I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask B, okay? So B, you can use your notes. Okay, the first question is, how much DO is generally good for trout or salmon in creeks? Oh, 10 plus milligrams per liter. Milligrams per liter, right? Okay, MG slash L. So is that full points? For that question, can we agree? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, second question is real simple. What does DO stand for? Yeah, I'm looking at you still. You're still in the hot seat. Do you know? I do not know. Okay, hold tight. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you. Okay. So here's what's interesting. As as you all just saw, it's possible to get a question right without knowing what you're talking about at all. But Jordan, you think you have an idea? So I can be like dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen, what made you say that? Because most families need to keep oxygen out of the water. Okay, and yeah, so you got it, like it makes sense that it's maybe dissolved oxygen, but do you, do you know that? Do you know for sure? No. No. And so, is there anybody here who actually knows? This? So DO does stand for dissolved oxygen. Does anybody here know what dissolved oxygen actually is? So this is interesting, right? Because in just a couple minutes, I figured out two things. The first is every single person in here now knows that having above 10 milligrams per liter of dissolved oxygen in a creek or stream is good for trout. And I don't think anybody in here outside of maybe Mr. Fiskin and me really know what dissolved oxygen is, why it's important. And my goal with you all 
is to have you be able to have conversations about things rather than knowing the right answers. I am not interested in whether or not you have the right answers for the things that we're talking about, because that doesn't mean anything. For many of you, that's what you're used to thinking about. You're used to being like, you've got to know the right answer. There's going to be a test and you have to know the right answer. That isn't what I want. I want to be able to talk to you about other things. So, Emily, in the back, I want you to pick a topic of conversation. And it's, I'm going to ask you um, to pick something real specific, really specific parameters. And that is, I want it to be something that you feel like you know a reasonable amount about, but you know you don't know everything. Anything at all, okay? Can you think about, do you have something in mind? A hobby, do you, do you, do you have any hobbies? Do you do any activities? Do you, are you a member of any clubs? Do you have a favorite subject in school? So you, you, don't, you don't do, you, do you draw ever? Do you make sketches? So, what's that? Soccer. Okay, so here we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk about soccer for a second. And so here's what I wanna ask you, do you, do you play soccer? You do, what position do you play? What's that? Striker? And goalie, okay. So, um, so as, as the goalie, there is a certain area in which you can touch the ball with your hands, right? What's that, do you know what that's called? The what? The 18, that's what they call it. They just refer to it as the 18. So if I go up to a soccer player and say, if you're in the 18, you can touch the ball, they'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then the, the next question, so Josh, the next question that I have is, um, do you, as a, as a striker, do you have the, you probably have the opportunity to score, score a reasonable amount of goals, right? Have you, do you play soccer for the CB team? Have you scored goals for our team? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so there's a couple things to think about here. Number one, number one, the idea of being nervous about talking about something that you're knowledgeable of, that is a flaw in our education system. The fact that you were so nervous that you didn't even want to talk at all is because we have told you that the worst thing in the world is to not know something. And we we go sit in back. And you go sit in back. Um, and, um, and that's really interesting because actually in our conversation, I think it was pretty clear that Emily does know what she's talking about. Didn't you feel like she knew what she was talking about? You say, you can talk about soccer because you know that. Here's another question. Do I know about soccer? How do you know? I asked you questions, and what about the questions that I asked you indicated that I know what I'm talking about? So if I didn't know anything about soccer, there would have been no way that I would ever have asked about like where can the goalie touch the ball with their hands, right? So you knew by my questioning that I had some information that I knew a little bit of something about soccer. And then the second thing is, um, the second thing is, do you think I know as much about soccer as you do? You, you, ha you have an idea. If, when we were talking, did I seem to be every bit as knowledgeable as you? That's not an answer. I want to know what you actually think. Like if I were to, you know, like if you, if you, if I, probably not. Why do you say that? Because I didn't know something that she knew. So it's clear in a simple conversation that Emily knows about soccer, I know about soccer. It's also clear from that same conversation, probably to all of us, that Emily knows more about soccer than I do. That right there is the kind of assessment 
that I am going to be having with all of you about the work that we're doing today. You are going to be assessed by your ability to have an intelligent conversation, like the one that Emily and I just had. If you memorize a bunch of stuff, and you are able to give me the equivalent of something like this, that's not an intelligent conversation. This is a random piece of information that you might know, or you might have written down, but you don't understand. What I'm looking for is for you to be able to talk to me about our topic for today, which is going to be DNA replication. I want you to be able to talk to me